Deepin is one of the more controversial Linux distros around due to various concerns about privacy. Here, however, we'll just be talking about the Deepin desktop environment instead. Is it secure? Is it sleek? Do we recommend it? Hi, this is Phil from MacTechesia, and this is the Deepin desktop environment review. In this Linux desktop environment review, we have a slightly controversial choice, Deepin, both as a distribution as a desktop environment. It's not one that everyone feels comfortable using and trusting. However, we'll be setting that aside, dispelling some myths and looking at the beautiful Deepin desktop environment or DDE, its user experience, some notable features and giving some recommendations on where to experience it and who should use it. Deepin first impressions. One of the first things I was struck by whilst using Deepin is how visual it is. It takes many really great design elements from around the Linux ecosystem and combines them into one desktop environment. It's a little of this, a little of that, and it's a really unique experience to use. It feels complete, like something that someone would customize a KDE Plasma install to look like. User experience. The user experience for Deepin is remarkably like a traditional desktop paradigm, even if it's a little fancier than normal. You have everything in the bottom taskbar, including a searchable application menu, pinned icons for favorite applications, and a system tray with all kinds of useful information. It's surprisingly traditional. DTK. One of the major features of Deepin is the Deepin Toolkit, or DTK. It's a framework for creating Deepin applications similar to GTK. DTK allows Deepin to have a very specific appearance and it makes applications developed for Deepin look very cohesive, much like GNOME applications tend to. Applications Speaking of Deepin applications, there are several applications that are native to the Deepin desktop environment. Everything from the file manager to the app store to the calculator have all been designed specifically for Deepin. This is very similar to Pantheon, where the developers had a very particular image in mind when they were creating it. File Manager One of the great things about creating your own applications for your desktop environment is that you have control over every little detail. The Deepin File Manager is one of those examples. It has great folder icons at a reasonable size to most Linux distros, but also has a great place where it shows you the mounted partitions in the computer folder. Rather than going all the way to the root directory and finding your different partitions that way, or even worse, going to other locations, you can just reach it from the default screen of the file manager. I really like this. It gives me a full transparency and control over the file system. App Store The Deepin App Store reminds me a lot of Discover from KDE Plasma, but it's a little better integrated. There are tons of categories on the left, and there are a bunch of applications in the Deepin App Store that have wine next to them. This means they are Windows applications that run under wine. The whole process is utterly seamless. All you have to do is click install and the application installs and runs itself under wine. Additionally, nothing is hidden from you. VNC servers and sensor applications are all visible to you. There's nothing that's hard to find. It makes you feel like there's a lot of software available for your Linux desktop. Control Center one thing that's really lacking for me in most Linux desktop environments is a good settings menu. The settings menu from macOS, for example, is so simple to navigate and makes me want something like that on my Linux desktop. The Deepin control panel is just that, an icon-based, dead simple settings manager that gives you what you need without a bunch of extra cruft in the way. Performance Performance is one of the areas where Deepin begins to, if not suffer, then just drag a little. At idle, Deepin hovers at about 870 megabytes of RAM and 8% CPU usage. This is a lot to ask of a machine, especially considering one of the things that's so great about Linux is the revive your old hardware thing. Deepin is not a great fit for those of you looking to use it on much older hardware. That said, if your hardware can handle it, the actual performance of the system is pretty good. Applications open quickly enough, switching from virtual desktop to virtual desktop is seamless, and it's overall a great experience to use on capable hardware. The cons of Deepin. One of the biggest cons for a lot of people is the feeling of it being a little bit juvenile. It's a hard line to walk, but between the default icon theme looking cartoonish to the strange look of the multitasking view, it feels like a system that's meant for someone half my age, or perhaps even younger. 
some people don't enjoy the visual design and have a hard time getting used to it. Personally, I, I kind of don't mind it. Where to experience Deepin? The most obvious place is the Deepin website. Here you can see all the good things about the DDE. And also, if you don't want to use Deepin, DDE is available for a variety of other distros. So it might be a good alternative to the one you currently use. Check it out and see. Who should use Deepin? Anybody who really likes the aesthetic of Deepin would be a great candidate. If you like cute stuff, if you like things neat, tidy and simple, then this is the one for you. Deepin is very focused on aesthetics and it's a perfect fit for someone who wants exactly that. OK, make sure to check out our other desktop environment reviews, including GNOME, XFCE, Cinnamon and more. Also check out our other Deepin content, like our Deepin Linux review, and our great guide to making Deepin more like Windows in three clicks. Links to all of that in the description. Okay, as always, thank you so much for watching. That's all for now. See you next time.